Hey guys, in this video I'll show you how to trigger a blood moon whenever you want. I actually found this while testing an even bigger exploit which will be my next video. You don't want to miss it. Weapon duplication and infinite durability with limitations. And I don't mean using the gore on Intari Town, I mean actual infinite durability on infinitely duplicating any weapon you want with limitations. I'm starting to think that the Blood Moon's sole purpose is to refresh the game so it doesn't slow down to 2 FPS. The Blood Moon flavor was probably just an interesting way to incorporate it. I do three things at the same time to trigger Blood Moons, and I usually spawn them every 10 minutes. Some people that are smarter than me could probably knock that down substantially. What you want to do is build a chunky device and save it to your auto-build favorites so you can access it whenever you want. I haven't fully tested how big the device has to be. I'm assuming more parts is better. I aim to make a lawnmower vehicle that cuts grass as I drive so the game gets taxed, showing all the bugs that get revealed. I also use the vehicle to take out enemies and neutrals on the map. These three things have gotten me a blood moon very quickly whenever I want. For a while I was exploring farming money by buying cheap armor at the bargainer statues since each piece sells for 600 rupees, and triggering the blood moon resets their stock so you can keep buying. Obviously now there's the materials duplication glitch, so that isn't very helpful anymore, but I was able to refresh the bargainer statue stock when I wanted to. The goal is to make the game work really hard to show all sorts of stuff on the map, from bugs to enemy drops, and I think that reducing the populations of enemies and neutrals also pushes the game to roll another blood moon. Basically, cause as much chaos in the game as possible, and the game will eventually be sick of your crap and trigger the event. There's lots of obvious benefits to forcing a Blood Moon event, not the least of which being refreshing the Octoroks. I chose Hyrule Field for this since it's a nice open space that I can cut a lot of grass with, but maybe there's better places that you can cause a lot of chaos in. I didn't explore the ground map enough to think of better places though. If someone out there knows how to light an entire forest filled with enemies and fluffy animals on fire, I'm guessing the game will be like hell no and trigger the Blood Moon event even quicker. This is a shorter video because there's lots of explaining for my next one. I'll show you how you can dupe weapons and even a way to clear out some enemy dens while you just sit back and watch. You don't want to miss that one. Also, the gameplay for this is a sped up clip of me triggering a blood moon shortly after a blood moon as proof of concept. Hopefully someone out there that's better at this game than me can work it into something a bit less ridiculous. Thanks for watching. Peace.